A nation's economic strength is inextricably linked to a robust banking system. For a banking system to be robust, it must have reliable infrastructure across all sections of society. In the last two to three decades, the very nature of financial transactions and banking has changed. Indian banks have transformed from brick and mortar to online platforms. From cash to card and from teller counters to clouds. Empowering citizens to achieve financial freedom and economic growth. At the heart of this transformation lies Information and Communication Technology or ICT. Join us to witness the ICT banking revolution. What is a bank? It's a place where our assets remain safe. It's an institution that helps grow financially. And it's a channel for us to conduct financial transactions in a secure manner. Our most traditional ideas of banking look something like this. A building with safes and lockers, with a staff to help us navigate the system. In this traditional setup, currency is usually in the form of paper and coin cash. This is Banking 1.0 and it is most commonly used across India today. But there are drawbacks to this system. While it works well in cities and high-income communities, it doesn't always reach the underserved or low-income citizens of India and many are not able to access or navigate it with ease. Gulzar Muhammad is one such person who does not find traditional banks convenient. We don't have the time to go to the bank. We are tailors and don't get a holiday easily. Filling forms and other things are complicated and no one help us. It is very difficult for us. We are very troubled by this. For people like Gulzar, Banking 1.0 is a tedious system. Luckily, information and communication technology has brought about the solution. It's the next level of banking, Banking 2.0. What does Banking 2.0 look like? Thanks to the internet, brick and mortar banks have now a virtual presence. Bank tellers are now also machines called ATMs and cash is now also paperless. In Banking 2.0, ordinary citizens can conduct financial transactions anytime, anywhere, often at the click of a button or via smart devices. How did this revolution come about? This is the Institute for Development and Research of Banking Technologies or IDRBT in Hyderabad. It was established by the RBI or Reserve Bank of India in the early 1990s and it was the only one of its kind in the world. Its job to innovate to make Indian banking smarter, especially as a new wave of IT was sweeping across global financial institutions. The 90s were a heady time for the Indian economy. Globalization had recently opened up local markets to foreign businesses and investors. The world was now looking to conduct easy and seamless transactions with India. Most foreign banks were already using telecommunications and the World Wide Web for many critical functions. The IDRBT's task was critical to India's economic future in its shrinking and increasingly connected world. It's a unique institution. Nowhere in the world we know that there is another institute which is set up by a central bank of the country exclusively for taking care of development and research in banking technology and help banks in adoption of technology so that the banks become much more useful to the customers in ultimate delivery of the services. 
In order to deliver useful services in customer-friendly manner, banking technologies achieved their first ICT milestone at the turn of the new millennium. It was called Core Banking. Today, every major bank's foundation rests on Core Banking. But what exactly is it? It's a system by which each branch of a bank is connected through a digital network. At its heart, or core, is a storage server. The server is a sophisticated hardware machine that stores every branch's information in digital format. It can communicate this digital information anytime to any bank branch by using satellite or telecommunication technology. This means that a customer can access his or her account from any outlet throughout the country. The advent of core banking in the early 2000s changed everything, paving the way for a whole new way of doing banking. Throughout India, a new kind of machine began sprouting up. It was the size of a small cupboard and it did many of the jobs that were traditionally done by brick and mortar banks. The ATM or automated telling machine is a 24-7 bank that anyone can access to withdraw or deposit cash, to deposit checks and even pay bills. All users need is an ATM card issued by the bank. Each ATM card contains a thin magnetic strip which holds the user's account information. Once inserted, a card reader receives the data. It then asks for the user's personal identification number or PIN. The card and PIN data is sent to a host computer which is connected to the bank's main storage server. Once all the data is confirmed, the user can carry out the transaction using the keypad and display monitor. Transaction details are sent back through the host server to the main bank's storage server. ATMs have revolutionized the way we bank by eliminating long procedures and bringing the bank back to our own backyard. Had telecommunication revolution did not take place, it would have been very difficult to reach the segments which are required to be reached. As far as the customer is concerned is that he is now treated a customer of the bank and he can avail of services anywhere. And that has brought anytime, anywhere banking also. And it's not just about ATMs. Core banking and IT technologies have ensured that even payments can happen effortlessly. Today, over 550 million transactions are happening through debit and credit cards, which rely on the same magnetic strip technology as ATMs. But as transactions get simpler, they also run increased security risks, like card fraud. In fact, Preventing fraud and ensuring that each financial transaction is secure is one of the biggest challenges of Banking 2.0. And so, each card comes with a security system known as the two-factor card authentication. Here, each account holder must provide a combination of two pieces of data to pass security. For example, card plus PIN or 16-digit card number plus CVV code, etc. India is the first country to prescribe two-factor authentication in card payment system. Initially, the reaction was that it is going to retard the, or reduce the volume of transactions. But over a period of time, the card payment industry has realized that it was a smart move to really go for two-factor authentication. But security isn't just about cards. When it comes to ensuring safety of each online or digital transaction, that's a job for the National Payments Corporation of India or NPCI. 
especially when it comes to online banking. Online banking allows users to replace a trip to the bank with a simple login to their net banking site. At the click of a button, users can check account details, apply for loans, and transfer funds from one account to another. Internet banking has many benefits. We can inquire about our account balance from whom, we can transfer money, electricity, water, and other bills can be paid online. We need not stand in lines for it. With the net banking, we can recharge from our homes using our mobiles. Earlier we used to have to go to a shop and it took more time. Even if we need to shop, we can do it from home. We don't need to waste time going to the market. 90% of all electronic transactions pass through the NPCI's National Financial Switch. The switch connects all the storage servers of every Indian bank and allows them to conduct transactions through systems like NEFT or National Electronic Fund Transfer or RTGS or Real-Time Gross Settlement. Every day, over 6 lakh electronic transactions are carried out this way. How do they stay secure? Each bank has a dedicated team for information security. Their job is to constantly monitor for any cyber threats like hacking or a breach of security software, phishing or fraudulent emails asking for the account holder's security information and malware or computer software designed to disable or destroy banking platforms. We have a vertical called information security team. Cyber crime cell is also there. These people's job is to keep on looking for every device and every activity. What are the risks as on today? And unless they people clear it, no product is getting uh, introduced. Banking is trust. So unless there is a trust, nobody would like to do it. The internet banking is a faceless banking, so I really don't see anybody there. So the banks have put in adequate security into internet bank and this is one of the major things that happened. And because of that, today we can say that people have trust in going to internet bank. Thanks to an ever-vigilant security system, online and ICT-enabled banking in India is moving towards a cashless economy. And it's not just for those who have access to computers or smart cards. These are the headquarters of the National Payments Corporation of India or NPCI in Mumbai. This is where nearly 90% of all electronic transactions pass through the national financial switch. The NPCI uses the switch to connect every Indian bank with one another making online transactions easier and safer. But not every Indian user does online banking because not every Indian has a personal computer. And so, the NPCI also enables the national financial switch to facilitate mobile banking. Banking technology in India is state of the art. For this money transfer system, we are using the same switch. This is a quite a smart move. Now all forms of channel have been plugged to IMPS. This is something unique in the world. Join us after the break to see how ICT is bringing change to even the most underserved users in Indian banking. IMPS or the Immediate Payment Service has revolutionized transactions across one of the most common devices in India, the mobile phone. As the name suggests, the transfer of funds is almost instantaneous, even on banking holidays. Today, all major Indian banks provide account holders with the IMPS facility. 
and it's just one of the ways in which mobile phones are becoming India's smallest and simplest banking outlets. Meet Suresh, a migrant worker who moved from his village in Orissa to the big city of New Delhi. It is very important that he send money back home every month. But this is not a simple matter. Earlier I used to send the money with relatives from my village. It used to reach after a very long time. I would be afraid about it being stolen on the way. If that were to happen, it would be a huge loss for me. While Suresh may not have easy access to a bank, he does have access to a very unique mobile technology called NovoPay. NovoPay is a mobile application that works on any phone with an Android operating system. It is a unique system that allows even ordinary shopkeepers to become local bankers. It's a simple Android phone attached with either a fingerprint scanner or an iris scanner that is compliant with Aadhaar and a little Bluetooth printer can become the banking platform. So if I'm a Kirana store owner in a little village somewhere in some corner of India with a smartphone and a biometric scanner and a printer, suddenly I become a banker along with no pace technology. How does it all work? A user visits a shop that offers NovoPay technologies. The shopkeeper is trained in using the application as well as devices like biometric scanners. The shopkeeper is effectively a qualified banking correspondent who helps users open bank accounts by filling digital forms and scanning verification documents like Aadhaar cards. With the app we immediately scan pictures, verify their documents and in minutes can open the account. This is helpful for those who can't read and write. They can withdraw and deposit money from here. Also, balance inquiry can be done from our mobile. They get rid of any hassles of going to the bank. The user's banking information is uploaded via the mobile app to NovoPay's host server in the cloud. Cloud servers are virtual storage spaces for digital information. These servers then send the information to the concerned bank's main storage server. At NovoPay's data center, one can get a glimpse of the traffic of mobile money transfers happening across 12 Indian states. When I type in your details here, take your Aadhaar number and authenticate you or do an EKYC, all of that through the mobile network comes to our server. Let's say you want to open an account with the Bank of India, which is one of our partners. It will get routed to Bank of India from our server. And the Bank of India server, the core banking system, will create an account, will respond back to us. We will send the message to them, and then the transaction gets completed. India has nearly 1,800 such shops with banking correspondence spread across the country. Banking correspondence also help users withdraw, deposit, and transfer funds, issue checkbooks and check account balance. Empowering local shopkeepers or Kirana stores with this technology has significantly expanded the banking network. Efficiency is far better because there is a location available all the time near the consumer. Here we are enabling a retailer who is already established. So he's actually got an incremental investment in the device and he gets an incremental revenue from the transactions. For users like Suresh, going to the bank has now become as easy as buying groceries. The entire transaction is done in a matter of minutes. I can trust them since I get this message on my mobile and my family also confirms that they got the money. It saves time. This is close to where I work. Plus, bank closed by 4 p.m. This is open even after that. So I can come late as well, even by 8 p.m. There are 300 million migrant workers in India who move across the country for work. So when they need to send money back to their homes, to their parents, their spouses and so on, it's important to have these payment systems that are easy, that are low cost, that are real time. 
So that's the reason why we brought this assisted model. This is like the STD booths for banking. Thanks to online and mobile models, Banking 2.0 ensures that banks come to wherever the customer is. But there is yet more innovation around the bend. After the break, we'll take a glimpse into the future and imagine Banking 3.0. For nearly 50% of Indians who still don't use banks, mobile banking technology has virtually brought those services right next to their home. And if the experts have any say, the revolution is only beginning. It's time for Banking 2.0 to upgrade to Banking 3.0. While the core banking provided the platform jump for the transaction ease, we thought that the futuristic model is to make the people to be adaptive on the digital technology. So we moved away from Bank 2.0 to Banking 3.0. What will Banking 3.0 look like? For that, it's time to return to the Institute for the Development and Research of Banking Technologies. We have got a mobile payment system lab. It's a lab which helps in designing some standards. It's a lab that helps many to come and do some experimentation. It is a lab that provides a lot of training which will help them to provide mobile banking. One of the latest mobile banking systems to enter the retail and services space is Mobile Wallets. It's a mobile-based account that stores cash for specific purposes like booking a taxi or shopping online. When a purchase is made or a service rendered, the payment is simply deducted from the mobile wallet. Such ICT technologies are changing the way people bank in India and not just in the big cities. Recently, an ambitious government-led scheme has been launched called the Jan Dhan Campaign. It's an effort to open bank accounts for all those Indians who have thus far been left out of the system. It's a collective effort of the entire financial system and the government to ensure that there is a financial inclusion, more people to come into it, and most probably with the technology like mobile, it becomes much faster. Nearly 41 crore bank accounts were opened till March 2015 under the Jan Dhan program. The challenge for Indian banking in the future will be not just to include the underserved, but to use ICT to create simpler systems that anyone can use, no matter where they are in India. Banking, if it has to reach the customers, it's not that the customer has to go to the branch, the banking should reach the customer. So the products, the services the banks have to give has to be designed in such a way that it is very easy for the customer to take the services. Please send your suggestions and comments to Vigyan Prasar, A50, Institutional Area, Sector 62, Noida, 201-309. You can also email us at info at vigyanprasar.gov.in.